All right, good. <laughs> I'm always nervous that I'm going to walk in, say life is about a quest, and then nothing's going to be there. So, and uh, I can't really do any contortions or anything. I'm just wearing the wrong kind of pants. That's the excuse I'm going by. So if you haven't already noticed, my kind of feeling, my kind of theme that I went in with this for was that I wanted to do the world's first meta TED Talk, a TED Talk about TED Talks for TEDx Chilliwack. So first off, I had to look at, well, what exactly is Chilliwack? What do people know it by? So uh, I found a couple definitions. And uh, if you don't know, a definition is somewhere between a truth, a lie, fact, and fiction. It's each person's interpretation. Uh, one I found through Tourism Chilliwack, our slogan is that we're Chilliwack, the great outside, big and bombastic. And if you look for the translation, you see something completely opposite. In Halkamalem, Chilliwack means quieter water at the head. We're tiny, we're quiet, we're calm. We're not great, we're not outside, we're just calm. Now, I wanted to find a third definition, something that would stir the pot that might make us think, okay, you know what, there's something more to Chilliwack than this. I found it. It was really quite something, and it goes like this. Chilliwack, a town in Fraser Valley, British Columbia, Canada. It is a t ah, it gets the good part just here. Okay. So, it is a town of religious people and junkies. I haven't even gotten to the end yet. Hold your applause. Hold your applause. <laughs> the junkies have scabs on their faces and other typical crackhead features. The religious people look a little better, but suffer from a narrow gene pool. Yeah. Yeah. No. Start, never start your speech on a high note. Start as low as you can go. You can only work out. And I want to say that for each of these definitions, it is a truth to somebody, but every truth is based on some stereotypes somewhere. So I wanted to look, what are some stereotypes we have about Chilliwack? Now, a simple way of looking at it is we are a town of farms, of mountains, and of rain. About 190 days a year of rain. Literally, wake up each morning, flip a coin. If it's heads, it's rain. If it's tails, it's not best you can get. But for about 90 of those days, about half that, we get to grow corn. Amazing corn. Delicious corn. In fact, it's called Chilliwack corn, right? It's one of those things people hear about us. Now, I think there's plenty more things people hear about us. One thing I've heard a lot is that we are a religious community. We're devoutly religious. And we have a church on every street. Now, have you ever stopped to think if they included avenues in that calculation? And if we are devoutly religious, I would love to see if we're all devoutly religious about the same thing. I mean, after all, I know one person in this town who is actually an ordained minister in the Church of Star Wars. And either we're all in the Church of Star Wars, and this is being really weird, or we all have different ideas. So if we're devoutly religious, it's all about something else. Now, another thing you might hear, a common phrase, is that we are a bedroom community. That means that we're you live here, but you work there. Now, is there something necessarily wrong with that? And is it our place to even pry? A famous statement once made about 30 years back by Pierre Algeau was, there's no place for the state in the details of the bedroom. So, if you think about it, you know, Pierre Trudeau, yeah, Pierre Trudeau, he has a really tough name, I'm going to skip him. <laughs> but... No, his son Justin, on the other hand, nice and easy name, and you know, I mean, if he was in your bedroom, well, it wouldn't be so bad, right? <laughs> but <laughs> I'm never going to get through this. You guys keep laughing. But um, <laughs> yeah, so again, great outside. That's something you hear a lot about us, right? Outside's great. Inside, meh, right? There's not much to do elsewhere. Well, I've always said there's tons to do in Chilliwack. It's just not always legal. Right? Now you think back to that ever definition. We're a town of junkies. We're the town of people who like to shoot up and read their Bibles, and sometimes at the same time. <laughs> but again, thinking back, there's a grain of truth to all these things. And for some people, that is their truth. Now, I think it's because everybody has their own story here. 
So I'd like to share a bit of mine. I've been here my entire life, so this is the only place I've ever heard from. So, you know, a bit of an echo. But uh, I'd really like to explain kind of why I think Chowak is a good place at its core. So it really starts when I graduate high school. I wasn't really sure where I was going. I felt really adrift, agitated, and alone. I felt like I didn't have purpose to life. I didn't know why I was waking up and why I was still breathing. So I wanted to find something I could do, somewhere I could matter. So I started volunteering everywhere. I mean, everywhere. So I have a lot of stories that have come out of that, and there's one in particular I'd like to talk about. So about five years back, I was volunteering it during the December cold snap. It was so there was me ringing the bells. There's the ice, the snow, the blizzard, everything. Just I'm freezing my butt off out there, ringing these bells, wondering why am I doing this? Experience this really intense self-doubt. And if you've ever been to that place, if something doesn't come along and change that, that's where you end. So at that moment, when I was experiencing that low of lows. A lady walked by, put some coins in the kettle, and said she'd be back a bit later. About 15 minutes later, she was really timely, she came back, she had a tray of food. She hands it to me, and she says, I noticed how cold and hungry you were, and I wanted to help. She gives me the food, and she drives off. And the interesting thing is, I've never forgotten that. I even remember the food it was. It was actually a bowl of clam chowder about this big, and it was a ham sandwich about this big. Never forgotten that. And those are the sorts of things that are printed in my mind indelibly. So what I was thinking from this is that everyone's got stories like that. Everyone needs to start sharing them. Now, there's always been a space for negative stories. Uh, a common example of this is if you look at groups like Beware Chilliwack or Change for Chilliwack, things like that that are really focused on all the crime, all the problems, they serve their purpose. They're a great way of giving uncensored, honest news. And I know I can relate to that personally, because seven days ago, my bike was stolen, and a video of the theft was posted on that site. <laughs> so it's something I'm still feeling. And man, some days I am just pissed, you know? <laughs> and I get that. I get that need to tell those stories, too. And there was a group that was focused all about telling the positive stories. But there was no space for negative. They eventually censored that. So what happens when you tell someone they can't talk? They either get quiet or they get really, really loud. So what happened is you had so many negative stories. Like a deluge, it flooded over all the positive. There was none of the positive left. And I feel like that's where we are today, and that's where we need to move from. So everybody has stories like the ones I've shared. And if you think about it, if we took the time to share the good stories as well as the bad, and we actually like made sure there was a space for it, we could change how people see this town. You think of all those stereotypes I mentioned, all those ideas, those definitions? Those truths for people could be different based on how we talk about the place we live. So if you can think of stories in your own life, much like the one I shared, you can make this place so much different. And just picture, in 10 years, people might tell completely different things about us because of what we've said about ourselves. And I think that's an incredible thing, and it's something every single person here can do. And it doesn't mean getting in front of a group of people and talking. Sometimes it's just talking to somebody you see, somebody you don't know, somebody who's visiting, anybody. But the key thing is, is that if we talk, if we share these stories, it makes a big difference. And the whole point of TEDx Chilliwack is about stories that empower. And it's not always in front here, but it's always within you. And you got to let that out. So good and bad, negative and positive, truth and lie, wherever it is, just make sure you share it with somebody, because it could completely change this town. Thank you. <laughs>